not bad, not bad. We can nicely fetch data in our application. We can display multiple returns. So user is aware of what's happening in our application. However, before we move on to the next topic, I also want to discuss fetch errors gotcha. Now, if you're not interested, if you're like, I'm always going to use Axios and all that, feel free to skip this video. Technically, this is optional. By the way, let me add that over here. I mean, if you don't want to follow along, you don't have to. Essentially, when it comes to fetch, unlike the Axios, it doesn't consider, for example, 400 or 500 to be an error. Instead, essentially, it treats that as a successful request. Now, why does that matter? Let's go back to our component and let's try to mess with the URL. So first, let me just mess up the domain. And the moment I do that, notice right away, I have error displayed. So this is going to be the error response. So this is going to trigger this catch block with fetch. However, if I'm going to change this around, and if I'll add the S over here, and basically if I'll refresh, now I'll have this works at. So as you can see, there is an error, but it's not actually handled in here. Again, why is that happening? Because fetch doesn't consider this 404 as an error. Effectively, we do have the successful response over here. It's just not the user we're looking for. And the way around that is essentially to look for the OK property. If you go over here and if you log the, I'm going to go with the response. Notice we have the response and then the value is true for OK. However, again, if we'll have here 404, and hopefully I'm not going to run out of the requests while I'm showing that, check it out over here. This is now false. So what we can do in the success block, we can check for that response. And if it is an error, we can set again the state value. So let me first, I guess, just navigate to a try block. And notice over here where we have the user. So I don't want to get the JSON if we're not successful. So right after the response, we can set up a condition. And I'm going to say over here, if response is not true, that's what that exclamation point means. So if the response that we're getting back is not okay, if this Boolean effectively is false, here's what I want to do. I want to go with set is error. I want to set it equal to true. So now we'll display which return? This one over here, correct? And then after that, we do want to set again, loading is false because I want to return from this function. What I don't want to do is keep reading. I don't want to go with response JSON. So I want to return. However, I also want to set loading to false. So this is where we need to do technically double the work where I'm going to go up, I'm going to copy and paste and now check it out. I have true for error, loading is false. And then I'm returning from this function. What it means that JavaScript is not going to read rest of the code, because again, I don't want JavaScript to go with response JSON. Why? Well, because I'm not getting back to user. What's the point of turning the error into a JSON? So let me go here and remove the log. Let's save that. And now notice how we nicely have is error, even though technically fetch doesn't trigger the catch block. So that's the fetch error gotcha I want you to be aware of. And up next, we're going to return to the topic why order matters when we are setting up multiple returns.